that certainly makes me feel like being in a ball game. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Well, we have come to the last night. And we can have a long night. <laughs> Amen. Is it okay, everybody? Yes. Let the last night be the best night. Yes. And the longest night. <laughs> we'll make up for all the other nights that we finish very early. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When you entered into this uh, church, you would have received a pamphlet like this. No. Did you? No. Is anyone who has not received one? No. If you will... Huh? Yeah, if you lift up your hand, the ushers will pass you one. Uh, this contains some information about our ministry. And um, there is a... Uh, many of you are watching our television network called Angel TV. And uh, there's a pamphlet here how you can watch this network in the U.S. So there's information... Um, here about all the various prophetic ministers who are part of this network and on the back page there is all this information how you can watch not only online but also through a DTH system called Glory Star which uh, not only carries our channel but it also carries about 70 other Christian channels TV and radio so that's the information here and uh, I don't want to take too much of the time. And this is a lovely prayer card that we have designed that you can continue to pray for us, uh, for our ministry and for our television network. And there's a nice little promise scripture here. This is supposed to be the Garden of Eden. And we also have a prayer request form if you would like for us to pray for you. And uh, you can write your prayer request form and give it to the bookstall. And if you like to partner with our ministry and support it, there is a partner form here at the back. So that's all the quick little announcements. I didn't feel to take too much of time tonight. In fact, I should because we're going to spend a long night tonight. Um, I also like to introduce to you some products that we have. This is the book of Revelation. This is a dramatized book of Revelation. One day, a thought came to me. When, when the Apostle John was in the island of Patmos, and he, he saw this entire vision of the book of Revelation, how did he felt? It was not just reading it like how we read today. When we read, we, we try to imagine. But when he saw, there was light, sound, color, right? There was everything. He was seeing and hearing at the same time. So I thought, this thought came to me, how about recreating that experience based on some of my personal experiences? When you see a vision, you see everything in uh, not only three dimension, in many dimensions. Because in heaven, it is not limited to three dimension. There are many, many dimensions of not only sight, but also sound and colors. So we decided to do this project, just like how if uh, John was saying it, how he would have heard the sound. He was in the island. The sea would have roared, the waves. So you'll hear the sound of the waves, and there'll be some seagulls flying. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, there'll be seagulls. And in the midst of all that, the heavenly dimension editing, where we heard the sound of the trumpet speaking, and the sound of this, the sound of that, we recreated all that in this CD. And uh, if you have a home theater, 
this will be an awesome experience to hear it in a 5.1 Dolby digital surround sound. <laughs> then you will feel that the sound is coming in all direction, all around you, and you're right in the center of the whole experience. Amen? So that's what we have done, and we have produced this in three languages, in English, and in the Tamil, that's my native language, and in the Hindi language, that is the national language of India. So if you have know some um, Christian or non-Christian Hindu friends, it's, you can use this as a witnessing tool to give to them, and for your personal self. You know, among the 66 books in the Bible, only concerning the book of Revelation it is written, Blessed is he who reads this book. All the books are blessed, but only this book is written, Blessed is he. You know why? You need lots of blessings to survive the last days. You need lots of blessings. So the book of Revelation that details everything till the end, this took us nine months to produce. And my four of my audio engineers, they worked day and night to produce this. And I personally oversaw this production because there's some things that they didn't understand. And they would call me as a consultant to ask me, okay, how would this sound? You know, there was once where John heard the four horns from the altar speaking to him. So how do you create the sound of the four horns speaking. So they don't know. So they called me and said, Sir, how does the four horns sound? I said, okay, this is how it sounds. So I can only describe how it is sounds, but how to reproduce it. So we, we tweaked and we tweaked and we tweaked until we got the right sound. Then I said, this is the sound. So you may want to hear that. Amen. So this is one. And this past few days, you've been uh, constantly hearing from Brother Neville about the four blood moons, that it will climax on September 28th. So I have this teaching on the four blood moons. You know, I have heard about the blood moon in the last two years, but never paid much attention to it. I don't know why, it just didn't uh, fascinate me or the hype about it did not interest me. Okay, blood moon. I didn't pay much attention to the blood moon except mere curious uh, look about the blood moon. So, uh, but this year, during the third blood moon, that is during the Passover, I was in the Philippines for a prayer conference. And the last day of the conference was to climax on the blood moon. And the Philippines, one of our pastors here, Pastor Ed Guzman. Please give a good clap to our Filipino friends. <laughs> They've been coming every year without fail. The bishop of that group, he comes. Unfortunately, he couldn't be with us this year, but he has sent his associate to be with us. So they had a big screen, and they showed live on the screen the changing face of the moon when it appears blood, blood red. So, and then I sought the Lord, Lord, please tell me something about the blood moon. Is it really real or just hype? Is it really real? So I, I sincerely sought the Lord, and I was caught up to heaven. And in heaven, I appeared before the council of the prophets. And they were all discussing, discussing about the blood moon. See, my question was, there are two good books about the blood moon. One is written by John Hagee, and the other is by Mark Blitz. Two very good books. And I read them. It, gave, it gives a lot of technical details about the blood moon, historical details, what happened in the past. But 
the one thing I did, I couldn't find was, okay, what does the blood moon signifies? What does it represent? So that question was not answered in any of those books. As good as they are, as wonderful as they are, no offense to the great uh, learned brilliance of those two wonderful men of God. But the question I had was, okay, what is the significance? Okay, you looked at the past. The, the blood moon, the four blood moons that appeared in the past, that relates to the Jewish fish. Three times it has appeared. So after it has appeared, then you look at a resulting event that has taken place, and you put two and two together. Okay, now we can look back at the past. Now what about the future? The 2014, 2015 blood moon. What does it signify? So that was my question. So in this council, I heard them discussing about the consequences that are going to take place after the blood moon appears. Three consequences. But don't write. I'm not going to preach that. It's all here. <laughs> it's all here. Right now, I, I will just say in one simple sentence, you know. But if you hear this, I elaborated it. Three consequences. One to Israel. What will happen to Israel? Secondly, to Europe. What's going to happen in Europe? And thirdly, the church. Have you ever wondered why it's called blood moon? Why wasn't it called red moon? Should have been red, you know? Isn't it? The color is red, right? So why is it called a red moon? Why is it called a blood moon? See, there's a clue there. Every time this has happened, there was a shedding of blood. In 1948, 1967, and this is the third tetrad for blood moons with a solar eclipse. Not only that, it falls on the Jewish feast days. Never happened before in history. Only three times in the last 500 years. And the Bible says, before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes, the sun will be darkened, the moon will turn to blood, and the stars will fall before the great and terrible day of the Lord. The next tetrad, blood moon, will be 100 years later. And there is no another 100 years. You know, several years ago, Brother Neville had an uh, experience with the Lord, and he has said this many times at this conference. And the Lord told him, the next jubilee that Israel will celebrate will be her last jubilee. So he asked the Lord, so when is that jubilee? So the next jubilee. And the Lord told him it will be in the year 2017. That is the year, is the jubilee of the reunification of East and West Jerusalem. So 2017 will be the 50th Golden Jubilee of the reunification of Jerusalem. So the Lord told him that will be the last Jubilee Israel will celebrate. Why? Because the next Jubilee will be 2067. And the Lord said, I will come before that. So you take that revelation from Brother Neville, and then this blood moon will appear another next 100 years, and that 100 years will be 2115, right? Is, it, is my math correct? So 2115, if the Lord's coming will be before 2067, which means we won't see the next blood moon, in 2117. Am I right? So this is the last one. 
And the last one means before the great and terrible day of the Lord. So you want to be ready. That is why our brother kept on emphasizing during this camp meeting that prepare yourselves, consecrate yourself afresh, anew, because this is your last chance. Amen? Your last chance. Your last chance to put all things right in your life. If you miss this last chance, you won't get another last chance. This is your last chance. Because we are in the final lap. In the final lap, you cannot afford to drop the baton down. If you drop the baton down, you lose the race. Right? So you have to hold the baton very tightly, holding on to your faith and running the race. Amen. Now, if you remember on the first night, I shared with you that um, during my visit here to the U.S. in the month of June, the Lord had shown me something about the U.S. that really stirred me like never before. You know, a few years ago, I remember we, Brother Neville and I, were speaking at our dear pastor Leonard Barber's church in St. Louis. And one day, during a worship, I saw into heaven and the Lord Jesus seated with the council of the elders there and they said the destiny of the US will be decided soon. This was about 10 years ago. So in the last 10 years, many, many wonderful prophets from within the US have lifted up their voice to cry out to the nation about judgments to come, about calamities to come. How much did we pay heed to that is a big question mark. Secondly, the Lord gave a sample by just slow, little bit lifting up his hand of protection over the nation. And you saw what happened at the Twin Towers on 9-11. Four bunch of terrorists without much military training brought the entire US down to her knees. Right? Okay. How long did it last? It? Just a couple of months. For, the, for two or three months, the whole nation, while mourning, seemed to Turn back towards God. Because during that period, all the churches were flooded. But did it last for long? The answer is no. In fact, from the year 2001 till now, the nation has gone worse. Instead of going up towards God, it has gone down and down and down and down into the ditch. The climax of it all was the Supreme Court's verdict on June 26. You should never forget that day in your life, you know. Because that's the day the nation totally turned her back to God. She turned. Now, before that, I was in Costa Mesa on June the 19th for a conference among the Chinese people. And one afternoon at 5.43, as I was preparing my message, the Lord Jesus walked into the room and he came and stood by the sliding door, window, just overlooking the city of Costa Mesa. He never spoke any word, he was just looking. And I was wondering what he was looking. And then he motioned me, come, come and stand beside me. So when I came and stood beside the Lord, 
he said, he was still looking, this place will be torn like how a paper will be torn in two. When he said this place, at that moment I felt in my spirit, he was referring to the state of California. He said it will be torn in two like how a paper is torn in two. So I was shocked because we have wonderful friends in California. Our ministry base is in California. So many wonderful friends and churches in California, like Pastor Sweet, who's so sweet. <laughs> so, you know, to be absolutely honest and sincere with you, in the past, I have never ever felt so emotional like how I felt that day. In the past, it, it didn't bother me. If the Lord said, destroy, I'll say, yes, Lord, destroy them. <laughs> or I would just repeat the word like how the Lord told me to say it. You know, I never felt one or emotional about the whole thing. But this time, it was so different. I felt so emotional. I pleaded with the Lord, why, Lord? Why? The Lord said, because she will tear my land. And I, I understood the Lord was referring to Israel. She will, she will tear my land. She will tear with her own hands the covenant she made with my people. So he said, warn her. So this is something that I've seen several times since the year 2013. In 2013, I was fasting for three days on the top of Mount Sinai. And on the third day, I was sitting on a rock and drinking my morning cup of tea and meditating the scriptures. And while I was meditating the scripture, for some reason I just lifted up my eyes to look. You know, sometimes when you want to deeply ponder, you look somewhere, don't you? So as I was lifted up my head to look at that direction, I saw a mighty angel come and stand about 20 feet away from me. And he said, this, will what, this is what will happen to the nation that will divide Israel. When he spoke that, a three-dimensional map of the U.S. appeared beside the angel. And he took his long, huge sword and stepped directly in the center of the U.S. And the continent broke into two. He said, this is what will happen. At that time, I didn't know that directly in the center where he stepped, there is a major earthquake fault line that according to geologists if you have an earthquake to the magnitude of 10.5 and above the entire North American continent will split break up into two so then I asked the Lord I was still shivering I started shivering and trembling inside me. So I asked the Lord, Lord, what about your people? There are so many of your dear saints here. So the Lord told me, they will be warned to flee from this place. They will be protected like how Lot was protected. Angels have been dispatched to measure the land and to mark out the places for destruction. So after saying this, he just disappeared. And I was just shaken. And uh, on the 20th of June, at 6.45 in the evening, a mighty angel appeared in my room with a scroll in his hand. He unfolded the scroll and he began to read. These people, Americans, 
have been marked for destruction. And I thought, oh my God, not something repeated or said in succession. This has never happened to me before, you know. Never in a continuous succession of two days. And when he spoke those words, I saw angels, many of them, in many places all over the U.S., standing ready to execute destruction upon the nation. And I saw three places that were marked for massive destruction through earthquakes. I do not know what are the three places. I was just shown three places. So I did some Googling, no? to find <laughs> because it, the, the clue was massive earthquake so if it's going to be a massive earthquake I wanted to see where are the major fault lines in the US so that a massive earthquake can strike and sure enough I found three places there are three great major earthquake fault lines in the US one is in California, the San Andreas, and the other is in the middle of the U.S., and the third is somewhere else. And then, again, I asked this angel, why? Why? Why must you all do this? So this angel told me, son of man, these people are wicked and obstinate, worse than Nineveh and Sodom and Gomorrah. So when I try to appeal, this is what they are saying. Why are you asking all this? Don't you know that these people are very wicked and very obstinate and they are worse than, they, than the people of Nineveh and Sodom and Gomorrah? So again, I appealed. Yeah, but they are still, because since he mentioned the word Sodom and Gomorrah, I, I picked that and I said, but Lot was safe. And Abraham prayed for righteous people. So there are righteous people in this nation. I told the angel, I can guarantee you, there are more than 50 righteous people See, I put my faith in all of you. <laughs> Hoping that I was right. Am I right? Yes. All right. So I told the angel, I can guarantee you, there are more than 50 righteous people in this nation. And Abraham prayed for 50 people. And God said, if there be 50, I will not destroy them. So when I appealed that, then the angel said, warn these people. Only prayer and repentance can save, if it can be saved. So, and this thing really, you know, bothered me very much. I've never ever felt like this before. And after the meetings in Costa Mesa, Pastor Joe Sweet and I, we were at Los Angeles airport waiting to board a flight to Houston. So while we were waiting, and they made an announcement, okay, now boarding has started. So we were in the queue waiting to board. At that moment, I heard a voice. Son of man, this city is going to be destroyed. So I turned around. And there was this mighty angel with a big weapon of destruction in his hand. And I saw this angel standing beside me. And at the same time, I also saw him standing outside the airport. You know, Los Angeles airport has got this space age type of uh, restaurant. What do you call that? <laughs> the 
Don't you have a name for that? Say again. Encounter. Sure, it was an encounter. Oh, no wonder he picked that place. Now I understand. This angel was standing beside me and standing outside near that encounter restaurant at the same time. It's, it's the same angel. But when he stood outside, he appeared so huge that his head touched the clouds. Just like you read in Revelation chapter 10. And he had this huge weapon of destruction that looked like a sledgehammer. You know the one that Thor has? Like that. <laughs> and he said, this city will be destroyed by a great earthquake. And when he spoke that, I saw many angels under his leadership. And they all stood at a exactly where the earthquake fault line is going to be in Los Angeles. They all stood in one line with their hammers lifted up in their hands, waiting for an order from this captain. So once he gives an order, they'll all <coughs> they'll strike on the ground. So again, I appeal to this angel. Why? Why? Again, he repeated, don't you know that these people are worse than Sodom and Gomorrah? I was so shaken, you know. And all during the three-hour flight to Houston, this, this thing really troubled me very much. What made it worse was, why three days in a row I received something very similar repeated three times. That further intrigued me and troubled me. Never have I heard, had anything like this in the past. Something repeated three times in three succession in a row in a short time. So I didn't know why. And I just, all throughout the journey, I was just pondering about this. And when we landed at Houston airport, we came out of the plane and we walked on the bridge. As soon as I stepped foot on Houston airport, I heard the voice. I thought, I think this angel followed me, you know. <laughs> he said, this city will be destroyed by a massive flood. I thought, oh no. I don't know anything about the history about Houston, you know. So while we were traveling from the airport to the city of Houston, the driver, the wonderful past, a minister of God who picked us, he was talking with Pastor Joe Sweet. And he mentioned something about there was a great flood in the city. I was, st I was still too occupied in my mind about what encounters that I had. I didn't quite pay attention to what both of them was talking about. But I just faintly heard the word flood. Okay. But when I got into the hotel room, I googled. Thank God for Google, you know. <laughs> You've got the whole world in your hands. <laughs> Are you old enough to know that song? Yes. Okay. So now Google is like that. So I, when I Googled, there was records of history of massive flooding in Houston. Now, it, it didn't make me very pleasant, you know. I don't know why this time, these things really bothered me very much. It has never bothered me in the past. Never. I just didn't know why. It, it bothered me so much until two days later when he saw in the news the nation, the highest legislation in the country has passed the same-sex marriage law. 
then I understood why. See, your judges are not just Supreme Court judges, but are judges of the land. And what they pronounce, they have put a curse on their own country. And by opening a floodgate. So first was the judges of the land. Second was the king of the land. As soon as the Supreme Court passed the bill, President Obama went on the air to second and to champion the cause of the passing of the bill. And the whole White House was lighted up in the rainbow colors of the LGBT community. You know, the White House is the king's house. It's supposed to be the representation before God. And what are they showing to God? It's like showing the feast sign, you know. I'm sorry to say that. But that's exactly what you've done. You show the finger sign to God by, by protracting the rainbow colors on the White House. That is gross sin. Gross sin. When I saw all this, then I understood why the Lord spoke three times in succession, which means things will come speedily. Speedily. Destruction will come speedily. So all your prayers can save you and your family. But that which has been determined upon the nation will come. Like what Brother Neville has been sharing these past three days about things that have been determined. Like what Daniel the prophet interpreted the dream that Nebuchadnezzar saw. He said, the thing has been decreed by the watchers. Decreed means done, passed. It will certainly come to pass. So, and then I still didn't give up, you know. I still didn't give up. So I wanted to give another one last shot. So, last week of July and the first week of August, I spoke at a conference in Maryland. So, in the meeting, Again, I knelt down before the Lord and I cried out. I said, Lord, is there something that can be done? That suddenly, like a light went out inside me. Oh, Nineveh. When the people all repented, God spared Nineveh. So I took it up before the Lord. Lord, I now have an argument for you. <laughs> so I brought up my argument before the Lord. Look, Lord, your word says that Jonah pronounced a judgment upon Nineveh and when the nation repented, you spat. Lord, there are so many prayer gatherings and prayer movements in this country. They will all pray, Lord. So I thought I won my argument, you know. Then the Lord told me, you know what's the difference? He asked me. You know what's the difference between the prayer movement in this country and what happened at Nineveh? The difference is this. Nineveh, from the king, right up to the smallest baby, fasted and prayed. So the Lord asked me, will the king of this country do that? So I, I rest my case. Will he? I had no more arguments to put before the Lord. But 